بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ وی آر کمنگ لائف وی آر ہلا ٹی وی ٹو دا ویوز ان ساؤتھ افریقہ اینڈ اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ فرام جامع مسجد ان گریس اسٹریٹ ڈربن We are thankful to the media, partners of Hilal and Al Ansar for being here with us for an occasion that we consider a very, very important event as our guest who has arrived from Malaysia as a honorary guest of the IPCI. Tatu Khamiruddin Abdullah from Malaysia We welcome him as a one man's amazing journey to Islam and commitment to Dawa. Born in 1968 in a Christian Catholic family, Haji has reverted to Islam in his teens when he was young as 18 years old after reading the Quran. He then began traveling the world passionately gathering Islamic knowledge. actively involved himself in dama dawa to the not yet muslims at all levels internationally frequently engaged in dialogue with christian missionaries the atheists the agnostics and other believers for more than 30 years dato haji has studied under various islamic scholars such as ustaz sheikh abdul hamid from pakistan and our very own late Sheikh Ahmad Didat and Dr. Zakir Naik. He is the founder of IFSI, which is equivalent to IPCI in Malaysia, and after meeting Sheikh Ahmad Didat 30 years ago, he resigned from senior management position as Malaysian Airlines to start Dawa work full-time. Currently, He is a city councillor in Penang government in Malaysia. He is an international Dawa activist, a motivator, a public speaker. It seems that he has a very, very good friendship with our Imam Hafiz Ashraf Peer. And I was so happy to know that he has remembered him 15 years ago that he was here. We are indeed grateful and honored to be partnering with IPCI, who we work closely with, and we thank them to allow the guests to be at the Juma Masjid today. Once again, it is our pleasure to invite our guest to the podium and honor him with the show, and he will address us for the next 20 to 25 minutes. Thereafter, inshallah, Sheikh Abdul Rahman will do the khutbah and salah. I now welcome our guest, Kamaruddin Abdullah from Malaysia. Asha. الحمد للہ رب العالمین وسلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ و علیہ وصحاب اجمائن اما اعوذ بل من شیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دین عند اللہ الاسلام رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهه قولي respected chief trusty dr ab muhammad my dear imam respected elders brothers i bring to you once again the greeting the greeting of peace and love and especially from malaysia assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers, there's a man, there's a man who hated our Prophet Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much. To the extent he is on the way to kill the Prophet. He hated the Prophet so much to the extent he make a journey to kill him. But the same man requested from Aisha radiallahu anha to be buried beside Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين We have not sent him except mercy to the entire creations and this week and this month is a month of Milad everybody is celebrating everybody remembering him he is the greatest mercy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to bring us out from the darkness of shirk to the light of tawheed the greatest gift that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam given to us is the light of tawheed to know and to recognize the true creator of this universe Allah Rabbul Jalil Jalal I 37 years back born in a family of Christian parents was Christian grandmother was Christian grandfather was a Christian it was Allah 100% mercy it was Allah's mercy that brought me to Islam not through a Muslim unfortunately it was the Quran was given to me and the Quran started to speak to me I challenge any of you in the world ask that reveal book so called the reveal book to talk to them but this Quran always in converse with each and every soul as Allah also always say Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu in tansurullah yansurukum wa yusabbida akadamakum oh you believe help Allah's religion Allah surely will help you and keep your stand firm Ya ayyuhal nas O mankind, inna qalaknakum min zakari wa unsa wa ja'annakum shu'uba wa qaba ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum inna Allaha alimul qabir O mankind, we have created you from a single pair male and female make you in nations and tribes so that you may know each other verily the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you Surely the believers are brothers. You can see right in front of us now in this masjid. The brown, the black, the white. Coming together. There's no other ideology. There's no other system. There's no other deen except Islam. Bring us together. This is the mercy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I studied Islam, the first thing I studied Islam is the name of Islam. Islam is not, not named after a person. Islam is not named after a founder or person, a place or a, a territory or tribe. Islam, the word Islam is given by Allah himself. Which I started my recitation in the Deen and the Life Islam in Surah Al Imran, chapter three, verse nineteen. In Surah Al Imran, chapter three, verse eighty-five. In Surah Maida, chapter five, verse three, the name Islam appears. We have to study Buddhism after the name of Gautama Buddha, Christianity after the name of Jesus Christ, Judaism after the place of a tribe of Judea. But Islam is not after the name of Muhammad This one evidence enough to make the Shahada. The name. And second element of the beauty of Islam, Allah Akbar, is not a complicated religion. It's a very simple, direct relationship with mankind, creation of Allah, with Allah, not complicated. We do not need anybody within us to worship Allah. <laughs> to you we worship, and only to you we ask. And for unlight. Others, they may have priesthood and they are monk, sheep, but we don't have. 
It's a direct. And Allah says in Surah Zumar, chapter 39, verse 53, verse 53, Allah shall forgive all your sins. Allah Akbar. Allah shall forgive all your sins. In Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 75. Remember this man, Wasi. Wasi, Allah Akbar, this narration, this story, this sirah. Allah Akbar. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved this uncle Amza. So much love. In battle Uhud, in Dun Haya Wasi. And he was speared by Wasi and entered to the heart of Sayyidina Amza and he fall and died. That is the moment Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the moments that is very sad and there's a recall, there's a narration saying that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did few times salat to janazah on Sayyidina Hamza. Oh. Allahu Akbar. How much the Meccans have given troubles, hardship to the Sayyidina Mustafa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much? Among them is battle of Badar Uhud and killing his dearest uncle Sayyidina Amza. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquered Mecca, he sent a delegation to see Wasi. To kill Wasi? Allahu Akbar. He had the power to kill Wasi. Sayyidut al Anbiya wal Mursaleen, Habibullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Rasulullah, he had the power and the authority of Mecca. He conquered with his 10,000 Sahaba. He had the power to kill Wasi. La la wa ma arsanna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin. He called, invited Wasi to Islam. What was the answer of Wasi? The answer was, I'm not fit to become Muslim because I have killed Sayyidina Hamza. Allah revealed in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse, chapter 25, verse 75, those who believe and repent, those who believe and repent and do righteousness, we will replace their evil with charity. I repeat, Allah will replace the evil to charity. Can you find any other than Allah with such a tremendous manifestation forgiveness? And was he accepted Islam? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not struggle for himself. He's not a leader unlike other leaders. Every moment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is for the sake of Allah. I give you another narration. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise him. Allah Akbar while I'm flying down from Cape Town to Durban, so tired. <laughs> Brother Muhammad Khan is bringing me the tired, been very tired. Day I arrive, no rest, no sightseeing. I was, I was asked to recall this incident of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah, the lover of Allah. Who can be better than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The creator of this universe that holds our souls. When Habibullah Rahman went to Taif, he was insulted in a way there's no other body been insulted. Not only that, the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, been chased by the children and stoned him. And the legs started to bleed. And he went to a garden. Where there he met a man called Handas. And he made him to make the shahada. 
while he was resting in the garden Jibreel alayhi salatu salam descend and he says oh Muhammad oh Rasulullah I was asked I was ordered to bring these two mountains the angels of two mountains to bring and crush Taif and make it a powder if he were to struggle for his own desire and lust surely he say go ahead you know what he say all imams all leaders all so called da'is must understand what he says in his dua oh Allah it was my shortcoming it was my shortcoming they may as not accept they have not received me it's my own shortcoming oh Allah forgive them and perhaps the later generation will accept Islam and today the entire Taif, today the entire Saudi Arabia is Muslim. Allah praise him. Indeed, in you the best and excellent character. Even Abu Lahab, even Abu Sufyan, even Abu Jahl acknowledge that he never spoke lie. He is truthful. Even in the battle, they are fighting. They still keep their property to Rasulullah Sallallahu Siddiq. And today, why? Today, why? We Muslims throughout the world became dogmatic to people. The same Allahu Akbar in the leadership of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the tarbiyah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the slaves they used to be slaves they used to be shepherd one third of this dunya on the feet of the Sahaba the man the man wanted to kill him Umar Al Khattab radiyallahu anhu when he make his shahada when he make his shahada after the wafat of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he became caliph one third of the dunya under the feet of Umar al Khattab who's the sahaba was leading the world they used to be slave they used to be shepherd but the deen of islam the wahyi of islam has transformed so called the barbaric nation to be the most noble and knowledgeable nation in the world was the Muhammad, the Ummah of Muhammad. And today we are dot meant for people. Why? My brothers, dear brothers, I would like to give you a call you and to remind you. And as Allah says in the Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 110, Kuntum khayru ummatin ukrajatin nas. You are the ummah, you are the ummah created, and you are the best of ummah for all mankind, nas. Not for Punjabi, not for India, not for Pakistan. We, ummah, are khayru ummah, the best of ummah with a great responsibility and an honor which is inviting mankind to Allah to bring them back to Tawheed today out of 7 billion human beings 5 billion human beings making shirk to Allah the greatest zulm the greatest injustice on the earth is to make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they worship idols in the form of man and they say they're God. They claim this so and so is son and daughters of God. And whereas Allah say, Call who Allah wahad, Allah who samad, lam yalit wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. Say, Allah is one and the only. Allah the eternal absolute. He begot no us begotten. There's none like unto him. Allah. My dear brothers, Allah has put you in South Africa. You could be a small number of people, but if you have Iman, 
if you have taqwa and you do jihad fi sabilillah you will overcome the biggest amount of people proven proven in the history of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam overcomes to the logic and rational 313 sahaba with all kind of shortcoming they have they defeated 1000 sophisticated soldiers of quraish with allah's help if allah is with you no one can overcome you allah says in surah al imran chapter 3 verse 160 if allah helps you no one overcomes you if allah forsake you is it the other than allah to help you let the believers put trust in allah the best wali is allah we are minority in the ocean of majority non-Muslims. We need Allah. And Allah will come to help when we help Allah's religion. This is a promise of Allah. Ya ayyullazina amanu, oh you believe, help the religion of Allah, Allah shall help you. And surely Allah will make your feet firm, the Iman. And this book, will make us angel walking on the earth. Wallahi, after accepting Islam and before accepting Islam, after accepting Islam, when I read this book and Allah talking to me as if I'm penetrating the origin of the skies and heavens, my heart been open white and I've tawakul in Allah. And I started very humble 33 years back in Da'wah. Very humble. But today, Allah has given me the nikmah and blessing sharing Islam throughout the world and giving free Quran free. Where does it come from? Allah. And this blessing of Islam you should share with your non-Muslim friends. Especially those who work under you. There are 7,000, I was told, there are 7,000 Muslim company in South Africa. Every time I go back to Malaysia, and I'm in Malaysia, when I give lecture, I'm talk so proudly about the Muslims of South Africa. The Muslims of South Africa is an example of businessmen in the world. I've never seen any Muslim community in the world are successful in business except the Muslim in South Africa throughout my musafir and under you there are thousands of workers are non-muslim you're giving them your the wages but the best of all wages is la ilaha illallah muhammad rasul they are not just when they have accepted the la ilaha muhammad rasulullah they are not only yours your worker they are your brothers and they will work harder for you. 7,000 company, 7,000 employer, bringing one, one of your employer to Islam, you have 7,000. And trust me, wallah, you trust me, this 7,000 employee will bring another 7,000. This is how Allah, it works. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us a motivation. Balligu anni wala aya convey from me even a sentence. Why one aya? Dr. A.V. Muhammad, one one aya. Imam Sahib, one aya. But today when we want to do dawa, we worried we are not like Imam Shafi'i. We may not be Imam Malik. Who says so? Prophet say one aya. You know, if you take one step to Allah's path, when you walk to Allah, Allah run to you. This is a discourse. You strive in this path, surely the, the pathway is open. <coughs> Allah Akbar. I cannot repay Allah with my nigma of Islam. I was in the darkness and darkness and deep darkness of shirk. Allah pull me, Allah take me out and give me the light of truth al Islam. I cannot pay him enough. With my sujood, with my fasting, with my tilawah, I cannot pay him. And I decided 
to help Allah's religion by sharing Tawheed, by sharing Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the last messenger of earth for mankind and every important sharing the message of the Quran. Allah warned us if your father, your sons, your daughters, your business, your bargain of business, and your mansion, your houses are dearer than Allah and His Rasul and, and jihad fi sabirillah. Allah say, Fatah Rabbasu. You wait, Allah says. And today is the answer is coming. Today the answer is coming. A Muslim walking to any airport with this kind of dress, we have a hard time. Why? It's not a hard time. We should be forefront with Isra, with the help of Allah. Denying, not just denying, replying the evil with goodness. Allah says in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse 34, repeal the evil with goodness. Europe started attack on our Nabi Kareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What should we do? Demonstrate? No. Ta'alaw! Allah says, Ya Ali Kitab, Ta'alaw! There was one man, there's one man in this street, in the city of Durban, there's one man challenged the rest, Shaykh Ahmadidah Rahimullah. He was one man. He went to the kingdom of America, challenged their high priest with the help of Allah. His tawakul was Rabbul Jalil Jalalu, not the tawakul with the Muslim billions of people. Today we are billions of Muslims. We cannot even help our brothers in Palestine. We are billions of Muslims. We cannot even help our brothers in Rohingya. We are so much divided. On top of this division, we have so much kilaf in understanding the deen. What Allah say? What tasimu bi abli la jamiya wa la tafaraku. Hold to the robe of Allah. Do not be divided. And we take, and we say, no, we know better than Allah. Yes? We are fighting not big things. Wallahi ya shaykh, maulanas. We are not shout, fighting, not, not big thing. Small, small kilaf. Thank Allah, I came to the draw or door of Islam through Tawheed. I came to Islam through this beautiful book. My respected chairman of the masjid, Imam, my dear brothers, my dear brothers, I plead you, I call you, make the intention to invite at least one in your lifetime. In your lifetime, make near this Friday, the day of Mubarak, the day of Millat. Make one intention. Before I meet my Lord, I would like to invite one non-Muslim. Especially my brothers from this African continent. They are Bilal's. Make them Bilal's. Make them Abu Zal al Gifari. And they are militant Muslims. They can propagate and use ourselves in the Muslims. May Allah enlighten you with the understanding of da'wah. And Alhamdulillah, in the Muslim among the forefront in doing da'wah in the world today. Be proud of yourself. And my sincere advice to all of you mix around mingle around with our non-muslim community don't isolate yourself when i was in zambia when i was in zimbabwe the minister was complaining the muslim like to isolate themselves this is not from islam the prophet say the best among you are more beneficial to others and the prophet say they are not among us who, do, who isolate themselves from society. May Allah grant us the understanding. And I'm very humble to meet you, to share what I'm going through, sharing Islam. 
And can you imagine the Prophet ﷺ mentioned many, many places, one soul accepted Islam because of your humble effort is better than this dunya. May Allah enlighten in this. And one soul accepted Islam because of our, our humble effort is better than red camels, better than the expensive vehicles. Better than this dunya. Why? The day John accepted Islam, the day that he or she makes shahada, taking wudu, ablution, making salah, fasting the month Ramadan, giving, going for hajj, giving zakat, and they get married, they beget children, and the children is Muslim. Even you are in the grave, the asana is coming. This is what the Prophet said, the Amajariya, when the son of Adam, when he passed away, everything is finished except three. The knowledge that you depart, the son that you make dua, the Amal Siddhika that you get left, that will avail you. And the greatest Amal Zariya that will avail is, inshallah, when one non-Muslim brother accepted Islam and they practicing and our Kubur will be a palace in Jannah. This is what bring me to da'wah. To thank Allah and to save myself from the torment of the grave and the torment of the Yawmil Qiyamah where we will be standing 50,000 years naked in front of our rock. And we should be VIP. Choose to be banned. VIP. Let the shade of Arash let the shade of Arash shed us when there's no shade. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fat, verse 28, Allah says, Who will the Arsala Rasulah who will Huda? Would deem a Hakil Yuzuro Haladin? Kuli, what Kafa Billahi Shahida? He has sent the deen, the guide, which is going to supersede all other deen, all other ism, all other ideology, even though they may dislike it, even though they may detest it. But let Allah be the witness of this victory. If you are without you, Allah is going to prevail his religion. And Allah is giving the blessing to invite all with beautiful preaching, wisdom, and love. With this, I would like to end. Jazakallah khair, jazak. Wa akhi dawana walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran Jazakallah Shaykh. It was very firing. I'll have to get some maintenance people to check that we have not cracked any walls up here because you were so fiery. And I can compliment and concur to say that whatever you have said was definitely from the bottom of your heart. You have relayed your life experience. And this is what is not written in the book and what is not taught, but something that you have been through the journey of life. Our dua for you is, may Almighty Allah give you the strength and may he give you the health to go on doing the dawah work, which I know you definitely love so well. We are very, very pleased that you were with us here. We have an open invitation to you. Whenever you do come back, please just remember that Juma Masjid is a home to you. On behalf of the Juma Masjid Trust Board, I wish to thank the IPCI, thank Hilal TV for being here with us today and making certain that not only the Muslims of Jame Masjid, but people throughout South Africa and the world are able to hear and see this dynamic talk that we just witnessed on the TV of Al Hilal. So, Al Hilal, thank you very much. May Allah give you all the strength and thank you very much. I know you have always taken Jamia Masjid as your home and we are pleased to have you with us.
الحميد المجيد الرشيد الشهيد اللطيف الخبير